Welcome back to Stay Home and Draw. The purpose of our little live videos are to, first of all, encourage people to stay home during this crazy pandemic we're experiencing to keep everybody safe and healthy, and also to inject a little creativity into your day. Um, a lot of people have maybe a little more free time than usual, uh, depending on your situation, so it's kind of fun to do something creative with that time, and that's kind of what we're here for today. Um, so today we're going to be drawing a cute little bumblebee illustration um, using one of my uh, brush sets, the Wash and Dry Watercolor Toolkit, uh, which I'll be showing you some really fun stuff that you can do with that. So um, this is slightly inspired <laughs> by the Making Art Every Day project. Um, I, actually, I'll show you that. Here we go. Uh, Making Art Every Day is a series of drawing prompts, tutorials, resources, an awesome community, all with the goal of helping you establish a daily art making practice and overcome your creative fears so that you can just make art. Um, so this month's theme has been weather. We're, we're in the last week of it now. Uh, the theme has been weather plus art styles. So we've been exploring different elements of weather mixed with different art styles. And today we're not, like I have this really great article, which I'll show you guys. 30 different art styles to try and procreate. Um, and we've like all month we've been doing these videos, we've been exploring the different art styles. Everybody that's been participating has been kind of incorporating different elements of these art styles into their work. Um, today, I'm not exactly doing anything on this list. And I think that's I think that's important because it's important for you guys to realize that when you're participating in this project or this challenge, um, there are so many ways that you can approach it. Just because something doesn't fall into the category of whatever like theme or challenge we're doing doesn't matter at all. <laughs> the important thing is that you are making art and it doesn't like if, if it goes a different way completely than what the rest of us are doing, that is amazing actually because that means you're being creative, you're following your own intuition and kind of pursuing whatever idea that you had. So. This style isn't like a style per se. It's kind of just something that I do. So you kind of get behind the scenes of, of my brain a little bit. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do today. Uh, and again, I'll show you what set we're going to be using. So this is a set that I made called the Wash and Dry Watercolor Toolkit. And it's like 48 different brushes that... Um, kind of emulate some of the different like watercolor wash textures and also dry brush textures. So that's where like the wash and the dry come from. Um, so they're really fun to use. And I think you, and, and a lot of people like really want to see like kind of how I use them. So I think it'll be really fun to show you guys that. So I'm going to jump into Procreate. So I'm going to grab my pencil. Let's scooch this plant over a little too close. Um, okay, so I'm going to create a new canvas. Today I am going to work in, um, I'm going to work in a square format, 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. That's what I'm going to be using today. You can go a little bit smaller. Um, the thing with canvas size when I like recommend it to you is, um, well, if you have like a smaller, slower iPad, you will get less layers to work with. But um, also like the scale of the textures and things will be exactly what I'm doing. Um, a lot of a lot of the brushes I make, the scale of the texture built into the brush are dependent on the um, the canvas size. So if you notice, it looks a little different. It could be because your canvas size is different, but I digress. So today we're gonna be drawing a cute little bumblebee. And I said this was kind of inspired by making art every day. Today's um, prompt is seasons. And I imagined this little, like a flower with a bumblebee, so kind of like a spring thing. Like I said, you can interpret the prompts however you want. I've seen some really cool stuff come out, like of people doing like all four seasons in one picture and like some just like really creative things. Um, but that's what I decided to do is like a little springtime kind of bee, bumblebee. So we're going to start with a sketch today. And before we get started, are we good on questions? Um, I just wanted to mention you guys that uh, Jeff, my husband's here. He's always here <laughs> running things behind the scenes and he's reading all your comments and questions and he's shouting things out to me and also answering your questions uh, like in the chat as well. So if you have any questions about what I'm doing today because you missed something or it didn't make sense, let me know. We will do like a general kind of Q&A at the end where we can like expand on 
you know, whatever else you guys want to talk about. And sometimes there's slow times where I can answer other types of questions, like one coloring things in. So feel free to uh, throw out your questions if you have them. And someone was asking if these brushes are up to date. Uh, and the answer is absolutely. Well, yeah. <laughs> is yes. They yes, they're up to date. date if, uh, I mean, depending on what you mean by up to date. Um, yeah, I released a set about a year ago. And um, so if you mean like, updated for procreate 5 uh this set is actually like next step on my list because procreate 5 came out with some really amazing features in the brush studio to make watercolor even more realistic um and closer to the real thing um so i am really excited to like play around with this set and update it and kind of do a big overhaul and if you already own this set those kind of updates where i'm i'm like doing an overhaul of the same set and re-releasing it uh, those are free. So if you get it now, you get what we have now. And then um, when I update it, you'll have that as well. So we just did that with the gouache paint box not too long ago. Okay, so um, let's get started with the sketch. So this this particular set comes in three different like little mini sets within it. There's the wash set, the dry set, and then the wash and dry tools. And right now we're in the wash and dry tools. I include a brush called the Dry Sketcher. It's just kind of like a fun, kind of dry, almost like a pencil-y kind of brush. Um, I included it for you to use to make your sketches, but of course you can use it for other things too, which you'll see I will do today. Um, but I always think it's good to include something to sketch with in, in as many of the sets as I can. Um, of course, you can always sketch with uh, a different pencil brush, like if you go into the sketching set and Procreate. It doesn't really matter for sketches. It's something that helps you kind of plan your artwork out. So again, we're in wash and dry tools. I'm using the dry sketcher. I've chosen just kind of like a middle gray for the color. Okay, so I imagine there's gonna be like a flower here and like a little bumblebee over here. So that's what we're gonna draw. Um, and I'll just start with the flower. And I'm just, uh, for this, so, um, I think when a lot of people imagine watercolor, they imagine like it like loose and blendy and like, um, you know, kind of like that. And that is that is a style. That's not the style I'm gonna be doing today. I'm doing kind of like a fun, more illustrative style. I, I guess you'll kind of see as we'll go. <laughs> um, so I'll show you, but let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna draw kind of a petal shape and then I'm gonna have two more petal shapes coming out the side of it. So this is gonna be my flower like that. I straighten it out a little bit using the transform tool. And okay, I'm gonna adjust this one a little lower. Sorry. I do kind of <laughs> perfectionist about things sometimes. So okay, there we go. That's a little better. And I'll straighten that out. Okay. So I've got this flower shape and I'm gonna also add a stem to it. Um just so I can things are a little clearer for me. I'm gonna erase away this line because actually I'm gonna erase the other line because I want this petal to be in the front, in front of the other two. And then I'm gonna add, you know, those like green, like the part of the, uh, you know, the bud <laughs> when it grows. This is that part, like the bottom. And then like a little thing like that and a stem. So that's my flower, really simple, like very simplified flower shape. It's no flower in particular. Um, and then I'm going to draw my bumblebee and we're going for like a very cute, like a very cutesy style, not realistic. Um, there is actually a style in that article that I showed you with the 30 different styles called naive, naive illustration. And what that means is kind of looks like a kid drew it <laughs> and you, you'll see this style pop up again and again, especially in children's work, like children's illustration, children's books and things like that or stuff for kids. But um, it's very simple and cutesy and kind of looks like, quote unquote, you know, sometimes bad, <laughs> like it was done by a kid. I wouldn't say that's bad, but um, like not refined. So this kind of has a little element of that in it too. But that, that actually is a style, like when it looks like not good, <laughs> not like refined and perfected. There, there's a name for that, but um, okay. So my bumblebee is just gonna be kind of like this like oblong ovaly shape like that and then I'm gonna add some stripes uh, how many is that one more there we go 
I'm trying to plan out because I want this to be yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow. Oh, I did too many. It doesn't really matter. This is just what I had in my head. So, <laughs> okay, so that's the little bumblebee body. Um, we're gonna put on a little cute little face on him. So we'll get some eyes and some little pupils there. So I, one thing I wanted to say about eyes that like when I made the people skills series last summer, um, which some of you might be familiar with, it's like learning how to draw people in a stylized way. Um, one of the things I like learned about drawing like cartoony eyeballs is like to put the pupils a little closer to the center, like not so close. Then this is my style. This is how I like to do eyes. Not so close to the center that it looks like cross-eyed, but if you put them like right in the middle, like sometimes the creature or whatever you're drawing looks like it's really surprised. <laughs> so I don't know. That's just a little thing that I've noticed that I like to do in my work. So you can kind of see that I've done that there. And then we'll do like a little smile and maybe some cute little cheeks, which we'll add in later. And then we're gonna add in the little bumblebee legs. And then some more on this side, kinda coming down. Actually, that looks weird. Kinda gotta decide where we want the legs to be. There we go. Maybe with that one is in between. Something like that. We can always like refine that later, so not too worried about it. Uh, of course, our bee is gonna need wings, and I think I wanna give it a little more room up top, so I'm just going to my selection tool, selecting that area, and going to transform, and just moving it down a little so I have room for my wings. That's the great thing about sketching is you can get everything in place before you start working on the actual thing. And then we'll just give them some little wings. So obviously not realistic at all. <laughs> uh, and then maybe like a little stinger. There we go. So there's my little bee. And then the other thing I'm gonna add to this is like a little dotted line for like his flight path, so to speak. So I don't know, maybe something like, something like that, like he flew around to give it a little movement. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my sketch. And I'm ready to move on and work on coloring. And what I'm gonna be showing you guys today is uh, a technique that I use to apply these different wash textures um, using building up, starting with the shapes and then adding the washes to those shapes. That probably doesn't make any sense yet, but it will. <laughs> so, um, so here's how I do it. So first of all, I'm going to reduce the opacity of my sketch layer. So you know, maybe to about there, you just hit the little N, slide it down. And I also like to set my sketches to multiply. So this is one of the blend modes down here. That makes sure it's always dark on top of whatever I'm, I'm drawing. I can always see my sketch layer. And then I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna move it below my sketch layer. So now I'm ready to start work. Um, so these brushes, so the wash brushes in particular, they are, uh, they have some transparency to them. And normally when you're working, we're gonna be working with a lot of layers today. And normally when you're working with layers, like you can use layers to block things, like hide, like if this was in front of this, it would block a part of that. But when things are transparent, you don't, you know, they're all see-through on top of each other. It doesn't quite work the same. So we wanna build those uh, opaque shapes first, and then we'll add like the washy textures on top of them. Again, that might not make perfect sense yet, but it will. Um, so all I wanna do now is draw my shapes. And this is usually how I start my artwork anyways, is uh, like drawing all the shapes and then adding textures and everything like line work and stuff like that on top. So um, let's start with the flower. And I will say that at this point in time, the colors that you choose don't matter. <laughs> um, I'm gonna show you, I'll show you like a kind of a preview of how this works. So if I choose just any random color, just green, I had that up, oops. I'm gonna start with one of my, um, I'm gonna go into wash and dry tools. And in this set, there's all these different brushes that I call shapers. And these are to draw the shapes of your piece. So if I was just gonna draw like a circle and I can fill that in with color drop, um, that's a shape. And then there's different like textures. So if you wanted a shape that had softer edges, you know, you could do, use this one that's the soft edge shaper. 
Um, let's see, there's the soaking edge shaper, which we're gonna use today. And that has kind of like a bleeding edge. And so that's that shape. And then what we're gonna do is basically turn these shapes to white and, um, and then add the color on top of them. So I'm not gonna, I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll just show you with the drawing, sorry. I'm a little flustered today, I think, you guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the crisp edge shaper. It's like the most um, kind of least textured edge out of all these different shapers. Um, so I'm just gonna use that to draw the shapes of this flower. And I'm gonna use color drop to drop it in. And because this does have kind of a textured edge, you'll wanna make sure your color drop threshold is set pretty high, which is if you drag in and don't lift up your pencil, you'll see this blue bar at the top and you want it to be kind of almost over to the, over to the right side. And you can adjust it by going, you know, let me do it one more time so you can see what it looks like when it doesn't work. You can move your pencil around to adjust it like that. So if it's looking like it has this white line because this is a textured brush, you'll want to adjust that. And that's what I just did. Yeah, someone was asking, color drop is always opaque, right? Like it never takes yeah. into account the brush you were using. Yeah, I see people ask about that a lot, actually. It, it doesn't apply texture for you. It's, mm -hmm. it's like dropping in a bucket of paint. It doesn't do any of the, <laughs> any of the fancy schmancy texture or anything like that. So, uh, but that's okay for this. We're going to add the texture later. So we want these nice, flat, solid shapes for what we're doing now, okay? All right, so there's that. And now I want these two petals to be um, behind this one. I know it's green, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I'm gonna create a layer and put it behind the other one. And then I'm just gonna draw this shape now. Oops. There we go, and I can make this whole, you know, both petals on the same layer because they're both behind kind of this other shape, petal shape. Yeah. Let's keep redoing it. There you go. Um, no, one more time. <laughs> okay, there we go. And then um, I do want to make sure this is a closed shape before I try to color drop it. So I have to Try to turn off this other layer with the petal, and it's not, so I just need to make sure it's closed. Otherwise, if I don't, the color will go everywhere because <laughs> it's not closed off. So, and since that's hidden, it doesn't really matter what that part looks like. Okay, all right, so now we have the petals on two layers. Uh, so we, we've done the flower part. I'm gonna also do the little stem on top. Um, so I'm gonna create another layer for that. I am gonna change my color a little bit just so that I can see what I'm doing because if I draw the same green on top of it, I wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. Same brush again, we're using the crisp edge shaper. And if you don't have this set and you're trying to follow along, um, you can use like a brush that maybe just has kind of, um, you know, a little bit of texture to it, but that's pretty solid. Like there are some things you could do, you won't get exactly the same results if you don't have this set, but I've seen people create really awesome stuff no matter what kind of tools they have, of course. Okay, so we have that, and then I'm gonna add the little, that little part there. And I'm also going to, um, I want these little areas to be pointy, so I'm gonna use my eraser tool for that. So I'm gonna basically just go to my eraser and tap and hold it, and that will select the same brush to use as an eraser. It's a little shortcut. So again, that was, if I have the brush selected, I go to the eraser, tap and hold, and now it's gonna use that brush. And I can, that way when I erase, I get like the same texture. So I'm just kind of erasing a little bit to make it pointier. There we go. And I'm actually gonna do that to the petals too. So I'll go back to that layer with the petal. And just, if I only need to erase one edge really. Oops, I gotta go to this layer and erase that, there we go. That just makes it pointy, and that's just like a visual thing that I like my petals to be pointy, okay. And then I'm gonna do one more layer for the stem. So that layer is gonna go behind, uh, behind the one with the like little bud 
things. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Um, so there we go. Another layer right there below this light green layer. And there. Okay. So that's our weirdly green flower. <laughs> don't worry that it's green. Um, well, it'll be all right. Um, we're going to do the B now. So again, I'm going in and I'm drawing all my shapes. And then we're going to like color and texture them afterwards. That's kind of my process with this set. Um, so for the bee, I, uh, bumblebees are like really furry and fuzzy. So I don't want to use the same brush. I'm going to use one that has a little bit more texture to it to draw the bee shape. So for this, I'm going to use the soaking edge shaper. So this is again, a very solid brush and it has this really great kind of bleeding kind of edge, which I think will look a lot like a fuzzy bumblebee. So I'm going to use that for that. And for this shape, we're just gonna draw the big oval. That's all we really need. So you can see that edge with the like texture. So I think that kind of reminds me of fur. Oops, I didn't mean to undo it. There we go, and then color it in. So that's it for the B shape, easy. And then we'll do the wings uh, as a separate layer as well. And I'm gonna use a different brush for that. Basically, when I'm choosing layers, uh, anything that is gonna be a different color than something else, like the B is gonna be um, this, it's, it'll be striped, but that we can do all on one layer. The wings will be kind of a bluish color. Um, I, I wanted these petals on separate layers so that I can easily add shading in between the different layers of petals. So you'll see that as we go on, but that's kind of how I'm making these decisions about what, um, uh, what to put on different layers. I'm just choosing another random color right now <laughs> to do the wings. It doesn't really matter, but it helps me see that they're different. So for the wings, I'm gonna use the crisp edge shaper again. Um, which brush were you on for the B? The B was the soaking edge shaper. This is in the wash and dry tools. Okay. Um, I did just notice that I put the, the stem and the B on the same layer, which actually isn't that big of a deal, but it might get kind of annoying to keep track of it later. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move it to a different layer real quick. I forgot to make a layer for that. So I'm gonna select the B using the, tr the selection tool. I'm gonna swipe down with three fingers. Oops, I just I did it with two fingers. All right, three fingers. There we go. And that, that'll pull up the copy paste menu and then I'm just gonna use cut and paste. And that'll put the B onto its own layer. So now we've got the stem, the B, I'll put the B up here. There we go. So now it's on its own layer. And now for the wings, I want them to be behind the bee. So I'm gonna put a layer right there behind the bee, underneath the bee. And again, we're on the crisp edge shaper now to draw the wings. Now, someone was asking a great question already. Yes. Why is the bee green? <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer. <laughs> the but... colors again don't matter <laughs> at this point in time. We're really just like laying out shapes. Um, and we're going to color them in later. You'll see this. I, this is kind of, it's kind of a fun process because you guys don't know what the heck I'm doing and you're just kind of following along and be like, what the heck? But I promise it will make sense soon. Um, I'm really glad to be doing this set with you because, uh, it is kind of different maybe than you're used to using in Procreate. So, all right. So I'm going to draw the wings and you know what? Like through this process, you might even find some crazy color combo that you really like because you were just using random colors. Like, I kind of like this, like, greeny teal and this lime green together, so maybe in another piece of art, I'll use that. <laughs> um, okay, so I've, I've drawn the wings. I'm also gonna draw the little stinger, and I'll do it on the same layer. Um, I'll just have to remember that it's on the same layer, which is fine, that will make sense later. Um, okay, so that's pretty much all my shapes. I'm gonna worry about this line later and then adding the details like the face and the legs and, and everything like that, I will do later as well. So, so what we're gonna do now that we've got all of our shapes kind of laid out is we're going to um, turn them white so that we can just add a fresh coat of color on them. <laughs> I know this, like, again, it probably doesn't make sense. I've said that, like, empteenth times in this video. Um, but I'll start, I'll start with the flower. And there are a couple ways that you could do this because once we turn, let's start with these two petals here. Actually, I'll start with this one in the middle. Once we turn these white, you won't be able to see them on a white background. So 
Um, I might actually just start by adding in the background instead. You can also turn this off. Okay, let's do the background though. Okay, so I created a new layer. It's below everything else. We're not gonna be using this background color layer. We want that to actually be white um, because we're gonna be adding the wash texture on top of it. We wanna have like a washy textured background. So now we're finally getting into the washes. Um, so we're gonna go over to the Bardo wash set. So again, this set comes with three, the wash, the dry, and the tools. We're going to wash. And I'm gonna use the stone wash brush. That's kind of when I really like that texture in that brush. And we're gonna just paint over the whole background and now we're using the colors we wanna use. So I'm gonna get like a, I don't know, like a sky blue, something light like that. And the way that these brushes work is you wanna layer them a lot in order to get like those really dynamic kind of colors. So I'm just gonna go over and do like once over, kind of like that. And you'll see like there's white showing through and things like that. Um, and kind of the beauty of this is as you add on more layers of, you can do the same color, you can mix in other colors, it'll fill in those white areas. Um, like if I were to get like a more different color here, it'll kind of fill in those white areas with the other colors that you're laying on and you get these like really dynamic kind of color <laughs> situations happening. And maybe down here I'll, uh, kind of do a gradient thing. I'm just kind of like building up. Every time you lay down more color, it gets darker, like a different stroke. So I'm kind of just like doing more strokes down at the bottom to make it darker. And so I have kind of like this gradient thing happening and we've got all these, this nice texture happening. And like, like if you really zoom in, you can see like the light blues and the dark blues and they're kind of all mixed together. So you'll see more of that as we do some more um, of this kind of color layering with the washes. So, so this is my background now. And now I'm gonna work on the flower. So I'm gonna go to this. Any questions? Which, okay, which, uh, <laughs> Before I move on. Which brush did we just use for the wash? Uh, okay, the wash I just made for the background is um, stone wash. I'll probably use that one a lot because I really like it. Um, I'm gonna use it again right now, actually. Okay, so now, um, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn this white. So the way that I'm gonna do that is we're gonna end up using, we're using alpha lock on all these layers to, work, to lock the shapes so that we can add the texture in and retain the shape. So basically, if I swipe, um, we'll do it on all of them actually. So if you swipe to the right with two fingers, we can turn on alpha lock on all of those layers. You can also do it by tapping it and making sure alpha lock is checked here. And you'll notice there's like a checkerboard pattern behind it. So now our shapes are locked. We can manipulate them, the, the you know, what's inside of these shapes without actually like changing the shape of the shape. <laughs> um, so that's why we're gonna put them all in alpha lock. And now I'm gonna turn, we'll start with just the flower and we're gonna turn it white. And a really easy way to do this is uh, just to double tap close to white and it will snap to white, like the pure white value with no, no color, no gray in it. And then you can tap on the layer and hit fill layer. And that'll just basically change it to white. And it, it does this because alpha lock is turned on. If alpha lock wasn't turned on, it would fill the whole layer with white. And we'll do this other petal too fill layer. I kind of like to change them to white as I go. So you can imagine if you're working with watercolor paint, um, you, you paint on white paper and you get the color that you want. If you were to paint on um, a colored paper, the colors would look not, not the color you probably intend them to use um, because they are transparent. It's a transparent medium, like the paint is transparent. Um, you can see through it. So that's why we're having these white shapes to start with, and then we can put the textures on top. And then which brush, what, 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 just tell, tell, me, tell us one more time what you just did. Mm -hmm. So what I just did, so the colors were green. Um, I turned on alpha lock on all these different layers. Uh, I have white selected in my color picker. I tap on the layer and I hit fill, and that just changes it to white. Um, I can do that again to this one. Tap on it and fill. And I want to start with white because it's, you know, white and pure, like a piece of paper. Um, and now I'm going to add the color in. 
The things will start making sense now, I promise. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna grab like a pink. My flower is gonna be pink. And again, I have the stone wash brush selected. I am on, I'm gonna go to this layer with the middle petal. And now, finally, color. So one pass through without lifting my pencil up, it will look like this, uh, which is a lot lighter than the color that I chose because these, these brushes do build up as you layer on strokes. And so I can add another layer and another layer to get it to the color that I want it to be. And what I love, love, love doing with these types of brushes is actually layering on other colors. So if I go all the way to like yellow, I can layer on yellow and that will make it a little warmer. And you also see like, you can see the pink here and then the yellow here, and it's got all these different tones of color in it. Um, and that's what I really love doing with these brushes is like mixing colors and layering them on and you get these really cool like color uh, effects happening. So, and then you can also, like if I go back to like the pinks, maybe a little darker, I can use them to shade. So I'm just kind of like lifting my pencil, putting it down, lifting my pencil, putting it down. And each time I do that, it'll get a little darker wherever I put it down. Like if I were to do it a bunch of times like that, it would get really dark and you could get these really like, I mean, that looks kind of cool too. <laughs> Not what I planned on doing, but you can, you know, really just build up and, and do like a really nice shaded effect. Is, this, is it making more sense now? I hope you guys. Um, okay, I'm gonna do these back petals too now. So I'm gonna go to that layer and I'm gonna choose, luckily if um, in Procreate 5, they have this really cool history, um, like little thing. <laughs> if you have a smaller iPad, like the screen size, you might not have this. So you might just have to like remember and go back and pick whatever color you used before. But luckily we have this history thing and we can go back and do like the same exact colors. I don't worry about it being the same exact colors. Generally, it's not that big a deal, but it's kind of nice that it's there. So that's one pass. I didn't lift my pencil. I'm gonna do one more time. And then maybe I'll, maybe one more light. And the heavier you press, the darker it will get. It's, that's, it's uh, pressure sensitive too. Or maybe I'll go get the yellow and I'll put that on top. And then I'll go back to this darker pink. And it's just fun to play around with colors and see what colors like layer on top of each other. Um, here I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a lot of strokes to kind of make it darker than the one in front of it. Maybe I'll go even darker with my color and smaller with my brush and really kind of emphasize the contrast between this, this petal and the one in front of it. Just go really dark like it was that. really awesome. Uh, Megan was letting us know that the bottom green flower, uh, leaves, or the, the petal piece, mm -hmm. that's called a sepal. A sepal. A sepal. I, I did definitely did not know that. <laughs> We've been learning flower anatomy on some of our other lives. Yeah, so I had, awesome. <laughs> and I did like, we did a cactus one for our procreate class and I learned all kinds of cactus anatomy stuff. Um, so yeah, so now you see like I've, I've started, kept layering and layering until I get some nice contrast between this petal. This one looks like it's in front. This one looks like it's behind. Um, so you can kind of like add, just keep layering and layering until you get as dark as you want. Um, and then another fun thing that you can do is with the dry brushes. So there's the wash brushes, which we've barely kind of touched on. <laughs> uh, but there's also these dry brushes and these are all like fun kind of like dry brush texture that are meant to play well with the wash textures. Um, so I am gonna choose the Gentle Grain. And they come in just a regular brush, which if you use it, it just looks, oops, like that, you know, just like a solid color. And then there's like a light and a dark version, and those will lighten or darken on top of whatever you put them on. So let me show you that. That's It's easier to see it than to say it. <laughs> so I'll start with a light brush. And when I use these brushes, I usually try to pick a middle tone of whatever color I'm using. So kind of like right there, not too dark, not too light, just kind of like right in the middle. Check what layer I'm on. I'm gonna go to this middle one, the middle petal. And then with a very light touch, I'm just kind of making some strokes down. And you can see this isn't the color I have selected. 
it's lighter than that because this brush is meant to lighten. Um, and what's great about that is now I can immediately switch over to the dark brush. And now it will use that same kind of color tone to darken. And, and that way you get like these harmonious lightening and darkening without having to like choose the perfect shade. It interacts with the colors underneath it. So if I was to use just like a solid one like this, it might look too light here, but too dark here. Does that make sense? <laughs> so now I've kind of got this fun, like almost like tulipy kind of texture there. So I'm gonna- And one more time, which, which brush are we on? Gentle Grain. I'm using the dark and the light versions to make these kind of light and dark marks. Um, so I haven't changed my color at all when I'm doing these. So now I'm going to this one. You'll get to see it again right now. So I'm using the, well, let's start with the light like we did before. So Gentle Grain Light. And I have this kind of like middle color. It's about, you know, that. I usually just sample a color kind of from the middle range when I'm doing this. And are you in Alpha Lock still? Yep, I have Alpha Lock's going to be on for the near future here. <laughs> Alpha Lock, I just turned it on on all of these layers. And that way, if I draw over here, it's, it's only staying within this shape. So that's why it's good to like get your shapes good and then you can like add the texture and everything to the shapes. I hope it's making more sense now. <laughs> so yeah, I just really lightly did a pass through. If you do it heavy, it'll be really heavy. Um, like if you use a lot of pressure, so a light touch is good. And then there on that side as well. And then I can go right over to the dark version of that brush without changing the color. And it should do a really nice kind of, yeah, like that. And you can, of course, the, you can adjust the color, like the darker you go with your dark brush, you know, it'll get really dark, which I kind of like that actually. That's like a really dark color. And the lighter you go, the less it will darken. You can't really see that. So you can adjust this to like, if it's like, oh, that's too dark, you can go lighter with the color. Um, and the same thing with the light. If it's too light, you can go darker with the color. <laughs> uh, experiment and play around with them and see what kind of effects you can get, but that's generally like how they work. So I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm just gonna leave that there and move on to the stem. Do we have any questions <laughs> before we move on? Are we okay? Uh, I haven't seen any pop up yet. I mean, you remember okay. seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I'll just whenever you have a question, throw it up, and Jeff will make sure I get it when when and, I. And someone just said, "Oh my God, I love that I now know how to use the sex." <laughs> uh, this is a while ago, but yeah, I yeah. This one, kid, like, there's lots of fun things you can do with. And I mean, I design, I design, I do not design my sets so that there's just one way to use them. Like, I design them and put them out in the world, and it's just like if you bought some paint and brushes and you figured out lots of ways to use them. That's how you should approach using any tools. Like see what they do um, and you'll probably find ways to use them that I didn't even think of, which is amazing. Like I think that's amazing. Um, and then there are the ways that like I design them to be used, but that's again, like that's just one or, you know, one or two or however many ways I'd come up with <laughs> of using them and that that's not the only way to use them. So like when you get any, any new tools, whether it's like paints or digital brushes or whatever, um, play around and see what kind of stuff you can do. And then of course, I like to also give lots and lots of resources for how I've found to use them um, to help you guys out too. So I'm really glad you're enjoying this. <laughs> can you just show your layers again real yep. quick as well? These are my layers so far. So I've got the background. Um, I've got the two layers for the petals my little stem and sipple, 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 <laughs> sepple. <laughs> Somebody told me what this thing is called. Uh, those are two layers and then the bee is on two layers as well. So we're gonna work on this green part now. Um, so I'll start with this little sepple bud thing, the thing that holds the bud. Um, again, alpha lock is turned on. Uh, it's turned on on all my layers. So that's really important. And um, I'm gonna turn this white. And I showed you one way already, which is to like select white here, uh, tap it and then hit fill layer. But I'm gonna show you another way. Because if you're like, I really like this green, I don't wanna have to try and find it later. 
Like you can draw your shapes close to the colors that you want them in the end. That might be easier for some people than just like picking random colors. Um, this is another way to do it. So I'm just gonna select this green so I have it ready to go. And then I'm gonna make sure I'm on the right layer, which is this one. Then I can go to Hue Saturation Brightness, which is in the Adjustments menu. So the little magic wand icon. And then I just turn the brightness all the way up to 100% and that'll make it white. The point is we wanna get the shapes to white and then we add the color back in because these brushes are transparent. If I were to, and you might be wondering why, if I were to just draw with um, one of the wash brushes, like the stone wash we're using over it, it's just gonna start darkening the color I already had, which isn't exactly what I want. Like I liked that color. I want that to ultimately be the color that I use. So if you just start with a color behind it, it's just gonna get darker and darker. So that's why we turn it to white first. Hope that clears that up. So again, I did that by going to hue, saturation, brightness, and just bumping it all the way up to bright, full brightness, and then it's white. And now, I can start layering on the colors to get, you know, achieve the color that I want to get. And for this, with for the greens, I really like mixing in like warm and cool greens and like yellow. So I'm gonna grab yellow now and kind of add that on top and that'll make it more limey green. Like I really love mixing the tones. You get all these like lots of texture, like color texture, I call it, uh, in there. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the stem down here as well, and then we'll add kind of some more to like make it a little shaded. So um, we'll do it in the same way. I'm just gonna grab this color because I like it, and I, that's kind of my good starting point when I'm adding color back into this. I'm gonna go to hue, saturation, brightness, bump it all the way up so it's white. And then I can start, oops, painting. Just layering in colors. I'm gonna grab yellow to make this a little more like a lime green kind of thing. And you see, you can see like you, you can see the like the darker greens, the yellows mixed in and it's this, it's very subtle, but when you like zoom out and look at it, like it has this really cool effect. Um, so let's go ahead and grab a, you know, like a darker green and I'll like start adding some shading to the stem. Um, I'm gonna do that. We'll use the, you can use any of the brushes to shade, but I really like the soaking wash brush. It makes a really nice, um, smooth shading. So if I wanted to shade like underneath here, underneath this little part, I'm just kind of like layering on strokes using this color. And now I have one side of it darker and kind of under here is darker too. And I can keep going and make that as dark as I want. So that's how you can add just some like really subtle shading. And I really love the brushes for this reason is because you don't have to like pick the perfect green to make a shadow. Like we just did a painterly tutorial, which you have to choose the right color <laughs> to make your shadows. But this you just layer, 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 and it just gets darker and darker until it's exactly what you want it. So that's kind of what I love about this. Let's add something to this one as well. So I'm going back to this thing with the Seppel, <laughs> so whoever said it before, <laughs> maybe remind me. I'm not gonna do too much. Yeah, seppel. To... seppel, thank you. Yeah, you can kind of, I don't really know what kind of shading this would look like, but. And then which brush are you on right, right I now? I am on the soaking wash. Soaking this is soaking wash, wash under the wash set. Soaking wash. Thanks Megan, by the way. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> And I can even add some uh, of the dry texture to this, which I think would look pretty cool. Um, so if I go over to the dry brush set, um, let's do let's do broom bristles. I'm gonna start with broom bristles light. I am still on the layer with the sepal. <laughs> this feels really weird to say. I've never heard that word before. And then just like really lightly add a little bit of I don't know, a little bit of texture to these areas. Maybe down there too, kind of like that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the dark version of that. And I'm just using the same green I was using to kind of add the shading. Um, so now I'm gonna get broom bristles dark and kind of add some of the dark green. It just kind of adds like a fun, like textured effect. 
Yeah. And I'll do it to the stem as well. So we'll go to the stem layer, add in a little bit of this. So it's interacting with whatever's below it. So wherever it's dark, it makes it even darker. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but that's why I like these lightening and darkening brushes. Now I'm getting the light brush, Broom Bristles Light. And maybe this is a little too light, like it's too, like too much. So in that case, I can make this color a little bit darker. Maybe it's still a little too light. See, I'm getting pretty dark now because it, there we go, that's a little bit better. It's not so intense. There you go. So there's the flower. Um, any questions that anybody has been asking before I move on to our little bumblebee? Think we're okay? Um, yeah, we're okay for right now. All right, cool. So uh, let's move on to the bee. Here he is, he's so cute. Okay, so first of all, we'll start with the bee's body. So I'm gonna go to this layer. I'm gonna turn it to white. So I'll do the same technique where I select white in the color picker. Um, I go to the layer, tap it, and then hit fill layer. And since I have alpha lock on, it'll just basically change that shape to white. And now I'm gonna start adding in, we're gonna do the yellow and the black all on the same layer. And the, for the brush I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the soaking wash brush again. I was just using that for my shading. Um, so soaking wash, it's from the like wash set. And let's go ahead and get like a yellow, something like that. And then I'll do his little face first. So I'm basically painting within the, we're gonna do the stripes. I always layer it a couple times. So I just did two passes of the yellow. I'm gonna come over here and do the same over here. So that was one pass and then a second pass. And I'll probably come back and make it even like darker and stuff, but I'm just gonna, just gonna start here for now. One more time. One pass, two passes. And now I'm gonna add in the like black, but I'm not gonna use like a pure black. I'm gonna use something like a, I wanna build up to, to the darkness that I want. So I'm just choosing this kind of like brown color for now and still using the soaking wash. And now these two layers will interact with each other. And you can see like the black kind of over the yellow and like they'll blend together a little bit. Um, so I did two passes each. I'm just starting out light and then I'm gonna build up into the darkness that I want. So now like I've got this great texture happening. It looks even more like fuzzy. So that's why I did it like all on one layer like that versus kind of separating the stripes out onto their own layer. Um, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna add like a really kind of bright orange to this now. And that's gonna like warm up that color a little bit. Like I said, I really like to experiment and play with color um, and like what colors I can layer on top of each other. And now maybe we'll go even darker down here. Yeah, we can just play around with that. I'm gonna work on the yellow part of it now. So um, we'll get maybe like a little bit warmer yellow and like do the underside of him that looks a little bit darker. And the more you layer, like if I were to layer, it's just gonna get even darker, which I kind of like that. I'm probably gonna do a little bit of that. I kind of like using saturated colors to do my shadows versus like adding black to it. Because if I were just to add like a, like a more, uh, more, more blackish tone with more black in it. It'll it'll look like that, you know, which maybe you like, but I like I like saturation in my shadows. I think it looks more fun and colorful and that's kind of like what I like to do. Um, and then I'll, I'll probably make this area a little darker. I just sampled the same color, make it darker there. And maybe like under, I'm just kind of like sampling these colors and adding in some shading to get it to look like I want it. There, 
So that's kind of like the B. Um, I'll probably keep working on like how I want it shaded, but for now I think I'm gonna move on to the wings. Um, but I just love this like fuzzy <laughs> like appearance that these brushes give you. Um, so I'm gonna do the wings now. So I'm gonna go to the layer with the wings and I'm gonna turn them to white. So we'll do select white, tap the layer, fill. Now they're white um, and the stinger's on the same layer. So just so we're aware. <laughs> Um, and then for the wings, I've got kind of like, all right, like I would imagine that the wings would be like a light blue kind of color, uh, but I've already got kind of light blue on the background. So I'll just have to make them even lighter than the background. Maybe, um, we'll see. I might have to, uh, maybe I'll make part of the background darker. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of take it as it comes. So, so there's the color that I'm selecting for the wings and let's do... Let's do the stone wash again. I like the texture of that one. You want to play with these brushes and see like what kind of textures you you like. Um, so maybe I'll turn off my sketch for now so I can really see what's going on. So that looks pretty good. I want there to be enough contrast between the wings and the background. So maybe like one side I'll make even darker of these. And I'll just kind of like go over to the side. I don't know if I'll like, yeah. That's kind of cool. I'm just like layering on strokes until it gets as dark as I want it to be. Same thing on this side. And here's where it maybe would have been beneficial to put the two wings on each on their own layer because I'm kind of, I kind of want there to be like a sharp edge where they overlap. Um, and I can't really do that with these brushes because they're soft on the edges. So that's why like it's important to put things that have hard edges like on different layers. And maybe I'll just go ahead and do that because I, I think I can do that pretty easily. Um, so if I, I'm gonna turn off the background real quick so I can really see what I'm doing. Let's see, I'm, oops. I'm gonna go to my selection tool and just, you know what I'll do? Is I'm just going to erase with the crisp edge shaper this part and then redraw it. It's a, it's an easy enough shape that I can just redraw it. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to create another layer and I'll just draw it in white. So it's already white and ready to go. And you might be wondering why I didn't just draw everything in white to begin with. And that's mostly because it's hard to see when you're drawing everything in white. Um, where am I trying to go? Wash and dry tools. Yeah, someone was just asking again why we drew everything in green. Uh, okay. It's yeah, the so. colors don't like you can draw them in the colors they're going to ultimately be like I kind of did with this stem down here. Um, it doesn't matter because you're going to ultimately change them to white and then like then you're worried about color and building up the color and things like that. So. All right, so now I'm going to draw a wing. So this wing is behind the other wing a little bit. Now, uh, someone was there saying. You know, that looked really cool the way that you're blending darker. Can you blend lighter easily as well? Yes, that is a great question. Um, I will show you that in just a minute because I think I'm going to add some highlights to the B. Um, but I have a special brush designed just to do that. Okay, so I've got the wings now on two layers. This is going to be more helpful for me to kind of shade a little bit. So that's kind of one of the reasons why you might put things on, on different layers is because you want that hard edge there. Uh, so let me turn my backgrounds back on. I'm on this layer. So again, I have to, now that this is a brand new layer, I have to um, turn on alpha lock. So, whoops, swipe to the right with two fingers. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> swipe to the right with two fingers, or you can tap it and hit alpha lock. And it's already white, so that's good. I'm ready to go. Uh, this was the color I started to use, and the brush was the stone wash. That's what I was using to fill these in. So say one more time, stone wash. Stone wash. Okay. And then I'll get this kind of like darker blue that I had selected and do like one. So, or I think, was I using a different one for that? I don't know. There we go. Now it looks like it's behind it. And I might, I might change how I do the wings and maybe I'll make them darker. I am gonna actually move the whole B down because it's really close to the top. So I'm gonna select all these layers just by swiping to the right on each of them. Go to transform and just move it down a little bit. There we go. 
Okay, so I'll revisit the wings. Um, they look okay for now. But I'm gonna go to this layer because I haven't done the stinger yet. So I'm on the layer with the wing and the stinger. And I'm gonna choose like a brown, dark brown. There's the first pass, second pass. I'm gonna keep going until I think it's dark enough. Maybe I'll go a little bit darker. Yeah. And I can even make it really dark right here where it meets the edge of the, the bee butt. <laughs> so there's my little bee. Um, and now we can like start to add some more details to it. Okay, we um, just lost, I got, I got. Okay. Oh, we just lost Instagram. Yeah. So we're gonna get that feedback up. Um, everybody else who's on YouTube and stuff, we don't have that problem. So um, I'll wait just a second while we get that going so you don't miss that part about lightening. But I'll turn my sketch back on. Or, oh, maybe not. <laughs> no, it's all like moved around. I'll, I'll come back to the sketch. Okay, I think we're back on Instagram. Cool. Okay, um, so I was gonna show you how, you how to lighten something because these brushes do get darker and darker every time you uh, add, you layer on top, which is how traditionally watercolor works. Like you can't, I mean, you could add white, but it gets a little muddy. Uh, to your watercolor paints, uh, that's not usually recommended with watercolor. You want the paper to be the white, which is why we have all these white shapes. Um, but this is digital. We don't have those constrictions. Uh, so I'll show you how I lighten things. So under the wash and dry tools, there is a brush called Color Lifter. And this is to lighten things. And if you were, if you wanted to lighten a watercolor that you already had put down on your paper, you would basically like use a Q-tip or or like a nap or a paper towel or something to like pull up the color. <laughs> uh, or even sometimes a wet paintbrush will do it. Um, so I'm gonna choose. I'll just choose a light color. What? And I'll show you how it works. So wherever you use it on top of, it will, I'll just really exaggerate it here for you guys. It will lighten. As long as you keep going, it'll just keep lightening and lightening. And it deposits a little bit of this color, whatever you have selected. So if I had like, I don't know, like a green selected, there'd be a little bit of a green tint, but it also lightens. So it's like gets green and lightens. Um, so just make sure whatever color you have selected works for how you want to light it. So if I wanted to like lighten here and like have that be like a highlight, I could do it like that. But I am gonna, I wanna darken a little more down here. Oops, I forgot to change brushes. <laughs> so uh, I wanna darken here a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to one of my wash brushes and the soaking wash was the one I was using for the bee. So yeah, I mean, just kind of keep experimenting and playing and getting the bee to look exactly like you want it to. Um, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and just add his little features now. So I'm going to turn my sketch back on. Of course, I moved my B a minute ago, so the sketch is kind of not in the right spot. Um, but I can move that. That's okay. So I'm on the sketch la layer. I'm going to select that part of my sketch. I could just redraw the whole thing, but there we go. Might be easier just to work from the sketch. Um, and now for the like face, I'm going to put that on its own layer. So right above the B. So there's the B. There I've got a new layer for the face. For his eyes, I'm going to make them white. And the brush I'm going to use is... Um, I'll do the crisp edge shaper. I want this to be a solid shape. All the wash brushes are transparent, so those wouldn't really work for drawing the eyes. Um, there you go. That's a good brush for making a nice solid shape like the eyes. And then I'll also do his little pupils with the same brush. He's so cute. And I think for the mouth, I'm gonna use this dry sketcher brush. Um, I, it's meant for sketching, but it's also great, like a great textured brush for adding details and things like that. Like I can see it here on my sketch. I'm like, oh, that looks good. So. I'm gonna use that brush a little bit bigger. There, his little smile. And then I'll also do his little cheeks as well, like a pink, something like that. Oh, he's cute. There you go, <laughs> cute little bee face. Uh, and then let's do the other details too, like the legs. Um, 
I could use the same dry sketcher brush for the legs. I probably want to get a black black, something really black. They're a little hard to see there, but that's okay. I'm just keeping it really simple with these legs, just little curvy lines. Um, and then the legs that are on the back end, I don't, it, it'd be hard to like get it like perfectly and like make it look like it's behind. So I'm gonna just create a layer behind the bee for those back legs. So that way I st I'm like retaining the texture of the bee where it's in front of the legs. There we go. So you guys, cute little legs. Um, I do wanna add some like line work to the wings. Um, I'm gonna turn the sketch off for now so I can see what I'm doing. And for the wings, I'll probably use a clipping mask to do those. So I'll create a layer above it. Um, and this is, I, I, like to, I like to split things up onto different layers as much as possible. So that's kind of why I like do a lot of layers, but I could just use using the alpha lock that's already set and like draw lines on top, but I can always combine layers. I can't un undo things. So, um, so I'm selecting that layer and hitting clipping mask. I'm gonna do white. And for the brush, I'm gonna use the wash detailer. It's kind of a semi-opaque brush and it's meant for like doing details. Um, so let's just, oops, what's going on here? Oh, I'm on top of, this one is clipped to this wing. <laughs> you pay attention to what you're clipped to. A couple of people were asking for antennas for the bee. Oh yeah. It does need an antenna, thank you. There we go, like some little, you know, those like little lines on the bee wings. <laughs> um, and then for this wing, I'll create a layer there. I will set it to be a clipping mask, just like I did here, but now it's for this wing. I'll definitely add antennas, guys. <laughs> antennae, I don't know the plural. There we go, something like that. And he needs some little antenna. So I'm gonna go to the layer with the face. That'll be a good one to use for that. And the brush, I'll do the dry sketcher again. That's what I use for the legs. Maybe something like that. Oops, that was not too dark. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me, I would have forgotten. There's cute little bee. Um, okay, so now I just wanna add this like little line that goes around that I drew. Um, and for that, I will just create another layer. Uh, I'm gonna do it in white. So I'm choosing white. And I think I'm gonna use the dry sketcher again. I really like the look of that like textury brush with all these other textures. So um, let's go full on big size with that. And then I'm just gonna, well, maybe a little smaller. And I'm gonna make this a dotted line. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So I've drawn that line. Let's see, goodbye sketch, let me turn that off. Uh, I'm gonna use the same brush as an eraser. So I'll tap and hold the eraser and that'll choose the dry sketcher as the eraser. And I'm just gonna go through and erase to make this like a little dotted line. I do have a brush in one of my sets that does dotted lines, but I think this is a fun way to do it too. Which brush are you using right now? This is Dry Sketcher from the Wash and Dry Tools. And so then this, you just set the brush to the eraser? Uh, yep, so now I've set the brush to the eraser and I'm just erasing to make this into kind of like a dotted line. It looks kind of fun this way. Do we have any questions while I'm creating this dotted line? <laughs> Um, yeah, someone was uh, saying, hey, when I made a clipping mask for the wings, the wings don't show up on the artwork. They do on the layer thumbnail. What did I do wrong? Um, I think you turned your wing into a clipping mask instead of a layer above the wing. So if I were to hit clipping mask on this layer with the wing, it's going to clip to whatever's below it and might make it disappear. So make sure your lines are the clipping mask, not the actual wing itself. Oops, not on the right layer anymore. There we go. Any other questions? I'll try and do this quickly. It's not the most interesting part of the whole thing. 
Uh, someone was asking if you can uh, do a drawing next using surrealism. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought about doing that one, but it's like so... Um like subjective, I guess. Like it comes from your, whatever crazy stuff is in your brain. <laughs> uh, so it like, <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'll do that one. <laughs> I do have something fun planned for, um, I'm trying to decide if I want to race right here or not. I don't know. That kind of looks good for Friday. So, okay. Um, so that's all the elements that I had planned for this illustration. I think I do want to add some, maybe some petals behind these petals. So I'm just going to do that really quick. So you can show you how you add more elements to something you've already done. Um, so these petals are going to be behind the petals I've already drawn. So I want to make sure I put a layer behind those petals or under those petals. Um, I'm just going to draw them in white because it'll, I, I can see it and it's fine. I'll just start with white since I'm going to make them white anyway. And I'm just gonna make sure that's a filled in shape like that. And one more here. Fill that in. I'm gonna grab my eraser in the same color, or in the same brush, pardon me, just to kind of sharpen those edges up a little bit. Make my pointy petals. And now, make sure it's completely filled. Um, I'm gonna turn on alpha lock on that layer. So swipe to the right with two fingers. So now alpha lock is on. It's okay that they look all funky because that part is hidden. Um, and now I'm gonna add the pink color. So I'm gonna choose like a light, light pink. So I want these to be a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna go to my wash brushes and I believe we use the stone wash for this flower. So I'm just gonna use that. There we go, I'll do another pass. And you just keep layering until you get like the colors that you want. I'm gonna go grab a warmer color, layer that in a little bit. And again, they're pressure sensitive, so the heavier you push, the more intense that color is gonna be. So I usually go pretty light and just add layers and layers. I'm gonna go back to the pink now, maybe a little darker, kinda add some darker tones in here. Not too dark, because I want them to still stand out. Um, and then I can go back and also add in some of those line kind of textures with the dry brushes. So I'm going to the dry set, and I believe we use gr gentle grain. So I'm gonna choose the light version. I'm gonna select this color. And it's probably too light, so I'm just gonna make that a little darker. Just really subtle kind of line work. Just really, really subtle. And then I'm also gonna grab the dark version and just maybe add, oh, see, now that's like too dark. So sometimes you have to adjust, make it a little lighter. Just really subtle here. There we go. All right. And I think that I'm all done with this illustration. So, I mean, as you guys can see, um, it's not, any particular style in particular, it's just kind of like exploring different techniques and things like that. Um, and that's totally okay. Like I've heard a lot of people, like we have a, a Facebook group for making art every day um, called making art every day slash Bardo brush where people, that's like where our community lives and like everybody shares their artwork and stuff. And I've often heard people say like, this isn't exactly the style or I don't know what style this is, but da da da. And it's like, that doesn't matter. Like the whole point isn't to make a piece that is completely representative of any one art style, but it's really just to like take elements of an art style and incorporate them into your work in some way. So this isn't watercolor style. I wouldn't say that at all. Like looking at this, I wouldn't say like, oh yes, that's watercolor. But we have elements of water. Like we have the water, well, like these washy kind of watercolor textures in it. And like these blends are kind of like, you know, reminiscent of watercolor, but it's, it's completely its own thing. And that is, that is actually amazing is to like take little bits of everything that you learn and incorporate them into your work. So yeah, that's kind of what we did with this piece. Um, so I would love to see your guys' work if you created something from today's um, tutorial, uh, post it on Instagram or in the Facebook group that we, I was talking about, um, hashtag Bardo Brush, you can tag me Bardo Brush or Lisa Bardo so I can see it. 
Um, I can take a few questions. If you guys have some questions, we can do a little bit of Q&A before we wrap things up for the day. Yeah, we've had a few different people ask the same kind of question on like, where do I start uh, with no experience of drawing? Um, you know, what Yeah. structure, order, like what, what do I do? Well, um, I, that's kind of why I created making art every day is like, really, it's just like, start drawing <laughs> and draw as much as you can. And some things are easier to approach than others. Like when I started making art every day in 2019, and I'll pull up the archive page so you guys can see it. Uh, Bardo brush slash May 2019. This is the archive page um, where you can see all the old prompts, although I'm still updating. It's not quite updated completely. So this is year one of Making Art Every Day. We started at the beginning of 2019. And we started with food, which I think is a really easy, approachable subject matter. Uh, I personally love it. So like drawing like an orange isn't too hard. It's like a circle with a leaf shape. Um, you can really simplify it. And we've kind of moved on through the year. We started with kind of easy approachable um, prompts and then moved on to more difficult things like we did animals and plants and then like objects um, and then by the time July rolled around we did people which is a very challenging topic <laughs> which I created a whole uh, series I mentioned earlier in the video people skills to help you learn how to draw people and then you know buildings like buildings have a lot of perspective and like environments like those are all more difficult things but just starting with something easy and working on it and building on it every day um, is really what's going to help you out so pick something that you like I mentioned before like picking an art medium that you like to work in pick a subject that you like to draw if you like to draw food draw a bunch of food um, whatever gets you drawing more is going to make you better um, so there isn't like one best way that I can say to start. Uh, it's just kind of like pick something that will get you wanting to draw often. Yeah. Uh, someone was asking what highlighter brush you used. Um, I think you might be talking about the lightning brush that I used here, which was the, in the wash and dry tools, it's called color lifter. So that's, what I use to lighten the colors, color lifter. And then um, someone's asking, let's see, uh, it's about the wash and dry tools. You're yeah. saying that I lay down color, then while it's wet, I go back in with a, uh, wait, so I played a bit with watercolor and often used a credit card as like a scraper. Mm -hmm. so I lay down color and when it's wet, I go back in with a scraper and scrape away the color. It leaves a sharp edge. Mm. Um, it's great for making rocky textures. Is there a digital equivalent to doing this in Procreate? Um, probably not exactly. Um, like you might want to break things with hard edges up into different shapes. And you can make a shape um, that has, let me just open up something new real quick. Um, I'm just gonna, like you could, you could build a shape that's like sharp on one edge and then, actually I'll make it a flat, and then um, soft on the other edge. Like you could build your shapes like that. Like this one is pressure sensitive, so you can make a shape, even though it's like got all these gradients and things like that, that's uh, soft on one edge. So I'm just really lightly doing one edge and I have a sharp edge on this side. So you could build up your shapes in that way. And this was the soft edge shaper. So if you wanna have a shape that has a soft edge and then you go back and fill it in with colors, um, that's what you can do. So hopefully that, that helps <laughs> answer that question. And uh, what's the best brush to draw hair with? I've had that one asked a couple times. Well, I can tell you my favorite brush to draw hair with um, because uh, I just freaking love it. It's in the uh, gouache paint box. I made this brush called Bristle Painter. Here it is, Bristle Painter. And I love it <laughs> for drawing hair and fur. And I have even used it to draw like wood grain and things like that. And it has these nice edges. And they also like, there's subtle color changes when you layer it on top of itself. I try to build that into a lot of different brushes because I love, I love those little subtle ch color changes that you get in traditional media that sometimes you don't get in digital. 
Um, so I like to build that into my um, my brushes a lot. So that's a, that's a really good one that I love for doing hair. But um, it depends on, this draws many hairs at a time. You could of course get almost any brush that kind of has a hair-like texture and just hair, 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 hair. <laughs> this one makes it go a little faster. So I, I really like that brush. Um, someone's asked, what is your favorite stay home and draw piece so far? Oh gosh. Um, that's a good question. I'm trying to look back at all of them. Like I really loved it when we did collage. That was really fun. Um, the pixel art, we did pixel art and that was also really, really, I don't know you guys, like I'm so all over the place. Like I love to try lots of different things and I like fall in love with them all for different reasons. And they're all like fun. I, I mostly what I love about this is seeing what you guys create from what I have taught you. Like the screen print one, we did this little sad kitty like last week, I think. And oh my gosh, like the the types of like screen print effect work that has come out of what you guys learned here is just incredible. And I love this look and what you guys are doing with an experimenting with color. And oh my gosh, like it's, that's been really, really cool for me to see. So <laughs> I get a really big high out of like seeing stuff that you guys make out of something that I taught you. So <laughs> keep doing it. I'm I'm really curious to see like what you guys kind of learn from this one that we did today. So um, yeah, it's always super fun for me. And then um, someone's asking, how long have you been drawing? Um, I mean, I've been using Procreate for like six years, over six years. Um, so that's drawing digitally and you know, long before that, I've, I've always done creative things and I've sketched in sketchbooks. I've, I study graphic design in college. So that's kind of like my formal background. Um, so we did lots of drawing and like thumbnail sketches and things like that for that. And just kind of, I mean, my whole life, I guess, <laughs> but seriously, like consistently drawing probably like 2016, at the beginning of 2016 is when I really like buckled down. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this every day and I'm going to really work at it and improve my skills um, where I was doing it consistently. So since then, I would say. Any other questions? I think we're maybe okay. All right, well... Um, Maybe Someone I'll... was asking what iPad uh, you have. Oh. Just just so you guys know, we're on Instagram. Uh, we've got a ton of extra details over on YouTube. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, things like which iPad, which uh, yeah, skin I... Lisa's using, although what, what's going to Yeah, doing? this is D brand, the little like pencil sticker. Uh, that's from a company called D brand. We've actually given away quite a few of these um, in some of our live videos like Fridays of when we've been doing the giveaway. So yeah. maybe we'll do another giveaway this Friday, you guys. Um, I promise we will. Okay. Even though Lisa doesn't know I've been I like to tease. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff likes to be definitive. I like to tease. <laughs> uh, so join us on Friday. We'll be doing a giveaway. Uh, I don't know if we have any more. We got to check. We got to check if we have more dbrand skins. Uh, we, we... Hey, dbrand, send us some more skins so we can give them away. <laughs> Um, and then Lisa's on a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Yeah, from, from 2008. And if you guys also... 2018. 2018. Yeah, 2008, this didn't exist. So, <laughs> uh, But if you go to um, my FAQ page, so bardobrush.com slash FAQ, I have links to all my like hardware and stuff that I recommend there, like my screen protector and my little stand and all that kind of good stuff is there as well, so... And then someone's asking, what uh, brush sets would I use for doing like anime kind of style, like comic book style? Um, you know, I I would probably recommend getting a set, which I, I don't have one, uh, that is designed for that. Like there are people that are really into anime artists that have created brush sets specifically for that. Um, I know like there's a lot of like inking brushes that you would use. I'm just, I, it's not a style that I do, so I haven't made a set for it. Um but uh, yeah, <laughs> I would probably look that up because there are people that are really into anime and really talented people that have made their own brush sets that are like specifically for that type of art. So I would probably just research that. I, I wouldn't recommend anyone in particular of my sets for something like that. 
Don't need more. Um, is there a way to cut pictures into shapes so the pieces like fit together for doing a mosaic mosaic style picture? Someone mm. was just asking. You guys are asking me to do a mosaic tutorial, <laughs> which mo the mosaic style, there are some really great tutorials that already exist, not by me, but by other people um, about how to do the mosaic look. And it's a very time consuming process. It looks really amazing at the end, but it does take a long, long time to like sit there and, and do it all. Um, so it's probably not the best one to do live. Um, but I know, um, Abby nurse or uproot, uh, Abby uproot. She's got a really great tutorial about mos how to do mosaic. It's really awesome. And the results from that are I've seen have been amazing. So I would check out that, uh, if you want to learn more about how to do like the mosaic style. What brush set? It was a great starter brush set. It gets asked a lot, but... Uh, <laughs> I like. I currently love the gouache paint box, and we've done a lot of tutorials using it. So that's that's a really fun set that you can do a lot of different looks with. But like I always say, like look at the different sets, see what kind of art was created with them, see what is more in line with what the kind of art you want to create. Like as if you went to an art store. Some people are going to want to pick up a box of colored pencils. Some people are going to want to pick up a thing of paints. Um, it's really up to you and like what kind of art that you want to make. So yeah. Yeah. I always say also like take a look at the bundles, like look yeah. at the starter bundle, look at the artist bundle and look at the art coming out of those mm -hmm. as a great place to go. Always check out Instagram, you guys. Yeah. Our Instagram uh, feed, we, on the feed, we feature artists that have you like, art that was made with those brushes and we do like a fun interview of the artists and you get some really cool, cool tips um so like instagram's a really good place to check it out the bardo brush hashtag also is you know is a really great place to see art that was made watching these tutorials will give you a handle like now i think people that have seen this can kind of get a handle on what one of the things that this set can do of course there's more than this but um but yeah yeah the bundles are good if you want to like try out a bunch of different stuff all right well I think we're probably good all right um so again I'm Lisa Bardot um I'll go I didn't I didn't make slides this time but there we go um <laughs> I'm Lisa Bardot my uh, website's bardobrush.com I make awesome brushes for procreate I also run the making our everyday project uh, which is what today's kind of uh, illustration was inspired by. So I hope you think about joining in on that. It's completely free, great way to improve your skills and um, also join a really awesome community of, of artists making art that are really supportive. We've got a Facebook group. You can learn more about it at bardobrush.com slash join M-A-E. And I hope you will join us on Friday for our next live. Um, it'll be our last kind of like art style exploration because we're in, reaching the end of that month and that theme. And I'm going to be exploring folk art, which I'm really, really excited about. So uh, I hope you join us on Friday at 1030 a.m. Pacific time. And other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. We'll see you Friday. Stay home, stay healthy, stay safe and stay creative. Bye-bye. <laughs>